started this idea at first in the laboratory, and it was based on this principle of psychological inoculation. And so just as with the virus, where you expose people to a weakened dose or an inactivated dose strain of a virus, it turns out you can do the same with information. Um, when you expose people to a severely weakened dose of misinformation or some of the techniques that are used to spread misinformation, and you refute them in advance, uh, people can be immunized against later uh, misinformation attacks uh, because they've built cognitive resistance. And that's what these games try to do. So we have one intervention that's called Bad News. Uh, this is a very general intervention, and it's a simulated social media environment. So this is a very important part. So we simulate social media, in, in this case, Twitter, so it feels like people are on social media, and then we expose them to weakened doses of some of the key strategies that are used to dupe people online. And the goal is to, to make use of these strategies in weakened form um, so that people learn uh, what some of the techniques are uh, that are used to dupe them. And so the, the point of the game is to try to gain as many followers as possible without losing any of your credibility um, by making use of of weakened doses of some of these tactics. So what are these tactics? There are things like polarizing people. Discrediting is part is a technique that's often used uh, in, in the spread of misinformation. Conspiracy theories, emotions to manipulate people. And so people make use of these tactics. And the other is called um, Go Viral, which was done together with the uh, UK government and the World Health Organization and the United Nations. Um, and it's a five minute game. It's much shorter than bad news. And it focuses specifically on misinformation about COVID-19. So there's three levels in that game. Um, the first is called uh, the fear monger. Uh, and, and that's where people learn about how emotions are used in news to try to manipulate how people feel about vaccinations and things like that. The second level is called uh, my imaginary expert, which is something we call the fake expert technique. So fake doctors, fake medical health professionals trying to peddle, you know, illegitimate cures. Uh, uh, for COVID-19. And the third level is called Master of Puppets, which is about conspiratorial narratives and, and luring people in. And so the idea is always the same, though, that um, in an interactive environment, we want to simulate for people what it's like to be attacked with misinformation so that people generate the right antibodies when they go out into social media on their own so that they're more resistant. In Taiwan, one of the kind of problems that we're facing in a public health sense is the fact that a lot of people over the age of 75 haven't been vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, only about 70% of people over the age of 75 are fully vaccinated in Taiwan. Uh, and when, when Taiwan began its vaccination campaign, a lot of people noticed that there was um, a fair amount of coverage, fair amount of press emphasis, particularly because Taiwan was COVID-free at that point on the the side effects of vaccination and, and, and you know, deaths that that uh, happened after vaccination, you know, whether or not there was a link. It's been, you know, almost a year now since Taiwan's vaccination campaign started. What would be your advice in this situation? I and mean, how, how can Taiwan help convince these people who haven't been vaccinated for, for months now to change their minds and, and get vaccinated now? It's important to try to distinguish legitimate concerns or misunderstandings from people who have been duped by, by misinformation who are, or, you know, who believe in conspiracy theories. And, uh, Generally, what we find, though, is that you try to avoid challenging people directly on their beliefs. So instead of saying you're wrong or your beliefs are incorrect or you need to get vaccinated, what you want to do is a more indirect approach is that you want to unveil the, the techniques of manipulation to people. So when do people kind of reconsider their position? It's A, when they feel like they might have been manipulated and B, they need to have some way of actually changing their decision without feeling that it's being forced uh, on them. And so what you can try to do um, is ask people, you know, questions in terms of, okay, well, you know, where did you get this information? Do you think that, you know, there could be a chance that it might be uh, incorrect? What do you think are the motivations for people to spread misinformation about COVID-19. For example, could it be that they don't want you to get vaccinated? Could it be that they're profiting off of spreading this? So you want to cast doubt on the motivations of bad actors. Uh, and that often tends to be more powerful than trying to change people's minds directly. So you want to get them questioning, which opens the door to then having conversations about changing uh, their opinion. And so, because, you know, nobody likes to be duped. Nobody wants to be manipulated. And so when people get that feeling, they might be more open to considering um, alternative sources of, of evidence and then where you can then uh, gently guide people uh, towards the evidence.